Hi, I'm Lima Milan, and in this video, we're going to look at grouping tracks in Ableton Live. So, grouping of a track is basically to take all the multiple audio outputs of different tracks and send them down one individual track to mix them together. Now, we already have this in our mixing environment. Our master track takes all the other tracks and combines them into that stereo mix that we end up hearing through our headphones or our speakers. So we're just going to create these, what we call, sub-mixes within our environment. So we're going to create individual smaller groups within there. Now, it's quite an easy process in Ableton Live. All we need to do is figure out what we want to group and then apply the group track function. So at the moment, I have a project where I've got an introduction scene, where I've got ambience and special effects. In that, I have a kick, and then I have two percussion parts, hi-hats, and no bass sound at that point. And then in my next scene, I have none of these ambient special effects. My kick and my snare provide the main beat. And then I have a different selection of percussion parts, hi-hats, and I do have a bass sound at that point as well. So the first thing that I might want to try and group uh, might be my kick, snare, and hi-hat. So it, basically, I, I can treat those sounds as a whole because they're essentially going to be my drum kit in this situation. So first, visually, to make this a bit easier, I'm going to grab my hi-hats and plonk that next to my kick and snare. And then all I need to do is, once I've clicked one side of these three tracks, hold shift and click the end of the area that I want to select to group. Now, if I control click at this stage to bring up the function menu, I can go down to group tracks. And immediately, when I've clicked that, you'll see there's now a new track which contains those three tracks. So we've basically taken those three different sound signals and we're now feeding them into this group track as well. Now the advantages of being able to do this means that if you want to add some processing to the drum sound as a whole, we can do this on the group track rather than trying to add it three times each to each track individually instead. So it's a good way of getting what we call cohesion to a sound. We can add one treatment to all three sounds because they're now being mixed together. So let's just have a listen to our kick, snare, and hi-hat together in that group. What I'm hitting here is a fold and unfold button here, which allows me to reveal or hide the contents of the group. And if I press play, we'll listen to the sound that we have. So now I can easily manage those three sounds. Let's have a look at um, one of the presets which might enhance our drum sound um, for our main drum kit. So I'm going to go to Audio Effect Racks, which are a collection of presets which use more than one processing unit to generate the outcome of the actual uh, use of the effect. And I'm going to go to the Mixing and Mastering section to just reveal that. And one of my favorite processes in this area is called Aggressive Dance Master. And it's basically just a very quick way of achieving a good sense of energy and loudness to your sound. So I just click and drag that. And remember, I need to drop that onto the group track because I want to process those three sounds as a whole. So with out, it sounds like this. And with, it sounds like this. So immediately it's louder, but the actual shape of it has changed too. And it, the actual processor is reacting to the kick followed by the snare and the hi-hats playing at the same time. So the way this processor reacts is different to the way it would if I did drag it individually to the kick, to the snare, and to the hi-hat in three instances. So let's just pull that volume down a little bit. It is louder, but it's louder than the rest of our sounds in the mix. So I'll just unsolo that, and let's do a grouping again and do a slightly different function with this. So I've got my kick and my snare. And let's focus on our percussion section. So we have percussion that runs on that introduction section, our first scene, and then we have percussion that's on the main drop when the bass comes in as well. So let's listen to those parts after we've grouped them to make it a little bit easier to solo them as a whole. So highlight them all, control and click, and group tracks. Now I can solo all the percussion parts at once and just focus on those four individual tracks at one time. So this is the percussion part for the introduction. Okay, so what we did before was we dragged some processing onto the kick, snare, and hi-hat group, our drum group. 
In this case, we've got our percussion parts, and I might want to kind of add some kind of ambience across the group so all the percussion parts start singing to the same tune of having the same shared ambience. So again, I can drag a reverb to each one individually, but that's the advantage of the groups. We can just do this as a whole to everything at once. So rather than dragging a reverb to the group, if you look at the mixing console, we actually have a group level control of sends, which allows us to send a copy of that signal elsewhere. So I have a reverb in my project set up as a return track here. So a reverb is sitting here, and we can feed that reverb part of our group signal just by turning up send A. So now, even if we move from the intro section to the main drop, and it's a different collection of percussion sounds, the reverb is consistent through those, and we get that cohesion of sound between two different song sections. Now let's use a different example of grouping, and I'll show you how we can do what's called nesting groups. So that is a group within a group. And you can do this as much as you want. I don't recommend that you do, but you can just group and group and group. So you get very sub-level in terms of how many things have been combined into to groups down the way. But what we're going to do is give our first two percussion sounds for that main drop a slightly different treatment to the percussion sounds that are in the introduction. So we have done something first with the reverb to bring them together. Now we're going to individualize the two layers of percussion for two different song sections. So I'll highlight the first two percussions and then group those. And you'll notice now the way that the folder system looks is we have a sort of a sub-level group container which contains those first two percussion layers. And if we do that again for the other two percussion tracks, those are now subgroup two. So let's focus on our first percussion group, and let's actually label these, because all I have in front of me is sevens and eights and groups written all over the place, and it's, it gets quite confusing. So if we control click and we do rename, this was the first group that we'd made that contained all of our percussion. So this wants to be called percussion. And if you need to, write the word group as well. That will help. If you want to see the writing in more detail, if it doesn't quite fit, either abbreviate what you're writing so it fits within the uh, view that you have, or you can just resize that so you can see the whole text. So now I'll rename the subgroups that are within this group. So the first one is the percussion for my main drop. So I'm going to rename that and call that drop perk. And then move over to the next part, which is my percussion for the introduction, so intro perk. And we can customize this with colors too. We can control click and select from a variety of colors if you want to give those a much more visually, easily identifiable kind of um, look within our project. So solo can happen at group level, track level, and subgroup level, these nested groups too. So I just want to hear the first two um, layers that I want to focus on. So I'm thinking of something I can add to this to, to make it unique. Um, in this case, I'm going to go for a plugin called Redux, which quite simply reduces the audio quality of the signal. So we can go for presets. That might be a good way to, to go without having to go too much into the plugin itself. So I'll press play, and then I'll use the hot swap function to audition the potential directions I can take this sound. quite like that one, so I'll go for there. Um, and let's go to intro perk, and let's, let's maybe go for Redux again, but go for a slightly different setting. So they have some shared characteristic, but the settings are different between those two, two different song sections. So intro perk, drop that on there. And that was the preset that actually dragged in at that time, so our introduction percussion sounds like this. And now a drop percussion sounds like this. So 
So let's put that in context of the whole project and see how this is sounding. Okay, so we've looked at grouping tracks here. We could do it from a practical point of view of just trying to treat things in a more like visually clearer way, group things and put them together based on what type of sounds that they are. We could do it from a processing point of view. So we can either individualize bits within certain groups or we can group things as a bigger picture and group more sounds together and add something that binds them together for that cohesion level as well. We've also looked at renaming our groups to make sure that we actually know, you know what we can do or what we're doing when we have so many things and so many levels of, of grouping going on as well. And we've also looked at the differences between treating a group with insert effects that are dragged onto the group or utilizing the sends that go to these return tracks so we can feed a group to a return track and have ambience and reverbs happening alongside the group as well.